things could have been a lot worse. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to another Bundle Banter. This will be another bundle, a weekly bundle from Humble Bundle. This is the 2K's Game Together Bundle. Is it any good? Overall, my impressions, yeah, it, it's pretty nice. There are a couple of turds in it that bring down what I think about it, but we won't let those sully things too much. So let's take a look at these tiers. In the basic tier, one doll hair, you've got Darkness 2, Sid Meier's Pirates, Carnival Games VR, and Spec Ops The Line. In the Beat the Average tier, we've got The Golf Club 2019, Bioshock The Collection, Sid Meier's Civ 3 Complete Edition, and NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. In the very toppest premium tier, we've got NBA 2K20, WWE 2K20, XCOM Enemy Unknown Complete Edition, Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced, as well as the Borderlands Handsome Collection. So there's probably a couple things that jump out at you right away, but we'll go ahead and go over the games and see exactly what it is that we're dealing with here. The Darkness 2, a satisfying but short first-person shooter power fantasy. You get like these tendril powers and decimating the enemy by bisecting them or impaling them just feels really great. The story itself isn't all it's cracked up to be, but I appreciate the inclusion of a story mode. The skill tree is a bit superficial and didn't do much for my game experience, but Darkness 2 runs smooth and doesn't look completely awful for an FPS released back in 2012. It's worth a play. While I wouldn't boot this up for the story, I'd certainly do so to experience that aforementioned power fantasy once again. Sid Meier's Pirates Open world naval RPGs are a notoriously difficult thing to pull off, but Sid Meier's Pirates managed to not botch things up completely, likely because of the smaller scale that is part and parcel of a game released in 2005. Similar to Darkness 2, it does hold up despite its age, but unlike the previous entry, there are a nearly infinite amount of ways to make it through this game. Do you want to be a sellsword? A politician? Maybe you just want to rack up a nice big bounty. This is a great game that you really can't go wrong experiencing at least once if you haven't already. Carnival Games VR. Disclaimer here that I do not have a VR headset, and the odds of me getting one aren't that great, unless one of my YouTube channels or my Patreon takes off significantly. With that said, I don't think that I'm missing out on all that much here. This game will reportedly only run if you're rocking an NVIDIA graphics card, which I am, but that doesn't make it any better for the people who aren't. I don't think I'm missing that much, however. It's basically a glorified Wii Sports from what I can tell. But hey! If you don't like the initial 12 games that are included, you can drop another $8 for a set of 6. Ugh. VR just has a long way to go, man. There are some really cool looking VR games out there, but this ain't one of them. Spec Ops The Line, a third person shooter from 2012 that I still find extremely, extremely tasty. It even still looks good, though it probably helps that the game was set in Dubai. I've seen third person games that go really crazy with what the player character can do. But Spec Ops stays relatively vanilla for a third-person title. It bills itself as a modern military shooter, after all. The story is really what sells this game for me. Well-written characters backed by excellent performances, with an ending that might surprise even the most skeptical. For one dollar? Frickin' get it. The Golf Club 2019. You might know that I'm not really a fan of sports titles, but this one isn't as terrible as some people might insist. The graphics are nice, and the game itself is relaxing, while still managing to present a challenge. Really, the only fault I can find is that the putting feels a little too difficult. There's a lot more friction than there should be on the green. It's also much more difficult to play this game on a mouse and keyboard than it is on a controller, but that issue can be easily overcome, either by getting a controller or playing enough to adjust to the mouse and keyboard controls. All things considered, a pretty nice entry for a sports game. Bioshock The Collection. Whew. Good stuff. The Bioshock games seem to have a different appeal, depending on who you're talking to. The story in each game, at least in my opinion, is quite well constructed, and it even manages to pull some people through that might not enjoy the combat aspects as much. Other people might enjoy the combat, or the puzzles, or the RPG elements, and be more or less indifferent to the story of the game. The combat doesn't feel realistic, which is what I think turns some people off, but... 
The good news is that it doesn't need to. It's a fantasy. Let go of your expectations and allow yourself to be whisked away to dystopian worlds, all of which have a different political ideology to break down. These games are all absolute masterpieces in my book. Sid Meier's Civ 3 Complete, two decades. <laughs> this game is still going strong. I think it was released in 2001. It's quite impressive to me that Civilization 3 has maintained a player base for as long as it has. The game really is an absolute classic, and even manages to outdo its sequels in many regards. While Civ 5 is often called the definitive 4X strategy, that is a title that used to be held by Civ 3. It's less complicated in many ways, and in a game as deep as Civilization can tend to be, that isn't necessarily a terrible thing. Strategy games tend to age better than their FPS counterparts, so I'd say Civ 3's worth a try. NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. Alright, we're digging into some poop now. Forgive the ranting. Uh, I'm not a fan of sports ball games. I'm also not a fan of microtransactions. Well, NBA 2K Playgrounds 2, that's a mouthful, has managed to bring these two things together in an unholy abomination of a marriage. On the bright side, the game is actually decently fun to play, so you might not notice what a grind it can be, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't like the big head chibi style players. The game is easy to learn, but hard to master, and it is actually pretty skill based. If it wasn't for so many characters being locked behind a paywall, I might actually play this game. And though it might be blasphemous for me to say, I, I would probably even like it. <laughs> NBA 2K20 is something that I would not like though. This is a notorious dumpster fire. You've probably caught wind of just how terrible this thing is. This pustule of a game feeds off of addiction, broken mechanics, and gambling in order to overcome those broken mechanics. As is the case for most sports titles, this game isn't that much different from the year prior, but this year it somehow feels significantly worse. Broken AI, massive loading times, crappy servers with constant lag, did I mention that the game also featured unskippable advertisements in a game that retails for 60 fucking dollars? This is the kind of cancer that will kill the gaming industry bar none. Do not support it. WWE 2K20. Well, how could they possibly do worse than NBA 2K20? Enter WWE 2K20. Take everything that was wrong with NBA 2K20 and just import it. But then, mix it up in a blender with copious amounts of game crashing bugs. Some of the glitches can be rather entertaining, but this isn't fucking big rigs over the road racing. It's a AAA game that is supposed to represent an extremely popular franchise. Visual concepts basically copied and pasted WWE 2K19 and called it a day. And somehow they still managed to get this many bugs. After seven patches, it's at least playable, kind of as long as you don't try to edit characters, or teams, or play any custom game modes. What a travesty. XCOM Enemy Unknown Complete. Things aren't all doom and gloom, we're going out pretty strong. The very first time I played XCOM, I got a big, rubbery one. It was the perfect blend of everything that I love about gaming. Turn-based strategy, blasting aliens, customizing and leveling characters, and then crying when they eventually met their ends at the hands of some space scum. This game taught me a lot about what an 80% chance actually means. There's a lot of lovely little additions to this game like the base building, but the combat's really what gets me. And there's even nice little touches to that. I love the fact that your soldiers can have panic attacks and like try to break and run when they're taking too much fire. The game is just an experience like no other. If you haven't had the good fortune to experience an XCOM title yet, this is the strategy game you need to play next. Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced. FPS RPG shooter looters definitely have their appeal, and Borderlands is the pioneer of that genre, so I guess if you're going to play one of these titles, Borderlands is one of the best ones to jump into. The art style and voice lines are great, but I get a bit turned off because it feels like it's trying to be a lot cooler than it actually is. Enhanced Edition does feature some quality of life improvements from the original, like better loot and auto pickups for cash and ammo and health, but that also came with a fair amount of bugs, so my feeling on this game are rather mixed. Still, it's not bad for the price, and considering it comes with all the Handsome Jack DLC, well, you'll definitely get more content than you can shake your boomstick at. Though I would definitely recommend hopping into this one with a friend, so you can turn Borderlands, 
from a passable FPS RPG experience into Broderlands, a joy-filled romp through a wasteland of your very own making. So then, the question of the hour, is this bundle worth it? The first and second tier, I would say absolutely. Go for that, beat the average, you're getting a great bundle of games there. For the top tier, oof. XCOM and Borderlands do tend to put it up higher for me, but man, those those 2K20 games just <laughs> are really not worth having in any way, shape, or form. Although some people seem to enjoy them despite the bad taste that they put in my mouth. So what do I really know, you know? But overall, I'd say that most people should just go for Beat the Average. Gives you a good amount of games, classic games, wonderful, amazing games for a relatively low price. Excluding NBA 2K Playgrounds and Carnival Games VR. But hey, even those you might be able to milk at least some joy out of. Really, there are some fantastic games in this bundle. If you'd like to get one of these fantastic games for yourself, we're going to be giving away Spec Ops The Line in my Discord server for the next seven days. So if you see this video within seven days of being posted, you can hop into the Discord server, head to the giveaways and sales section, and interact with the giveaway bot. It's got like a little emoji, and that's all it takes. Boom, you're entered. But yeah, overall, I think that this pile of games is a relatively good value for money. If you haven't played XCOM or Borderlands, oh, I might even go for the top tier. But if you've got those two games, then easy, easy beat the average. You could even hack off the beat the average tier, to be honest, if you already played through Bioshock and aren't that into sports games, similar to myself. <laughs> so basically all I picked up was Pirates and a Carnival game that I'll never play. But hey, that's alright. Let's be honest, things could have been a lot worse. But anyways, friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share the video around. Check out the links in the description. Not only do we have Twitter, Discord, and that aforementioned Patreon, we've also got links to this bundle. So if you buy it, I can get a little bit of a kickback from it, which, that's always nice. Then I could buy more bundles, and they'll technically be free, so my wife won't yell at me. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I sincerely appreciate you watching this far. I hope to catch up with you guys either on Twitter or Discord, and if not, then I shall see you in the next video. Once again, friends, this has been Bundle Banter, Humble Bundles 2K Game Together Bundle. <laughs> I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.